Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I have some exciting news. I'd like to show you a new script. It's called the NB Color Mapper script. This is a script that will allow you to very quickly and easily colorize your narrowband data. I was recently describing on my site how to do this in a more manual way to colorize narrowband images, but I just thought to myself, there's got to be a better way. What I really wanted was the ability to have a color picker, literally just pick a color and colorize an image and do that for all the other images and then see in real time how this developing narrowband color image looks. I could modify the colors and see how that is affecting the result. And so I approached Mike Cranfield. I said, Mike, can we do this? I knew that Mike had already developed much of what was necessary because of his work on the color mask script. I knew he had a uh, color picker. I knew he had the ability to display in one of his scripts, uh, a, you know, a real-time preview of images. And uh, so, of course, Mike is a brilliant uh, software developer and programmer. He did it. He made the script. That's what I'm going to be demonstrating is kind of my vision of what a uh, narrow band colorization script looks like. Uh, and there are some other scripts out there that are similar to this, but I actually think this one is very straightforward because of its visual feedback. And ultimately, it's just actually a lot of fun. It's great fun to be able to do this and uh, remove that abstraction that you often get when you're just working with numbers. So I, Mike and I think that this is going to be a neat offering for the community. For those that do narrowband imaging, we hope that this is going to make life easier, basically. In PixInsight, anytime you can add a script that has anything to do with fun, you're on the right track. So I hope that you enjoy watching this demonstration and using the script. Please comment down below, below the description in the comments, and let me know what you think about this new script. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. In this video, I'm going to be introducing the new narrowband color mapper script. It takes grayscale images, linear grayscale images like this. This is the Helix Nebula from wonderful data from Russ Croman. Take these images and colorize them, any colors you want, to produce a beautiful narrowband color picture. You get to choose the colors and see in real time what the result looks like in the script. Now, before I show you the script, you should know where to get it. Go under Resources, Updates, where you can go to man Manage Your Repositories. Afterwards, by the way, you'll want to check for updates so you'll download it. And scrolling down here in my list, here is the address that you want to put in for the repository. Don't forget to put that last slash. Then, once you've downloaded it, you can actually follow along with me. Let me show you the script really quickly because one of the things I like about the script is that it is super attractive. And that really is the inspiration behind the script. I wanted to take NB and make it NBF, nothing but fun. What I've always wanted is the ability to pick a color with a color picker and associate that color with any grayscale image that I want for my narrowband data. I just want that visual experience. In PixInsight, if you use, for example, pixel math, that is an abstraction. It, you're going to remove that visual experience. You have to kind of understand that, you know, these numbers equal this color, so on and so forth. But here you literally have the color picker to do the job, and then you're going to see in a real-time preview what the color image is looking like. You can manipulate the colors and see an update. So I'm going to show you more about the script here in a moment, but let me just give you a little bit of background so that you can appreciate how the script works. Just 30 seconds. First thing I'm going to do is make a copy of this image because I'd like to just make this image pure color. It's going to be a color swatch is what I'm going to demonstrate here. To do this, I'm going to first convert the image to an RGB image because I'm going to colorize it. And then this is where the abstraction is. I'm going to go to pixel math, where we're going to use the individual channels. Now, since this is O3 data, we want to put maybe equal amounts of information in the blue and the green. Uh, I'm going to make it a little more blue than green. So I'll put 0 0.55, 0 0.45. And in red, I'll just put zero. When I apply that to this image, I'm just going to make pure color. It'll be some blue color like that. Now what we want is the hue and the saturation values from this image. The intensity we don't care about. The intensity is going to come from here. So to do that, there, is, there are two processes that are going to help us. We want first 
channel extraction, where we can extract just the hue and the saturation from the HSI uh, color space. That's going to give us two images. These two values basically are what we want. And then all I need to do is go to channel combination, where I can take that hue here. It's, this is the hue value. Here's the SI. These two images. And let, uh, let me be sure that I've done it correctly, because I've done this a couple of times here. So there's the saturation. This is the hue here. And then this one. Well, this is our intensity that goes here. When I press the button here, we're going to get a colorized view of this image. But I will caution you that if you're following along with me, don't press the automatic stretch because there is no information in the red channel. The automatic screen transfer function does not do as you might expect. So here we are. If I just continue to brighten this up, you'll see that we have now a colorized version of this image. And you can imagine that in this manual way of doing it, you would just make three color patches, colorize each of the individual channels, and blend them together. And that would make a color picture. This is part of what is going on behind the scenes in the script. This is part of what it's doing. Now we can go ahead and jump right into the script. Before we go, though, I want to mention something that I think is helpful. That is, rename your master lights to some shorter name. You'll see in the script that the identification of these frames as well as the labeling of them is much makes much more sense if it's not a huge thing. So I call them something shorter. This one is Helix 03. Here is the Helix HA and so on. So let's go ahead and go into the script here. And we can begin by loading these views, which we'll call layers in this upper region and the control region to change the color and colorize them, that, those controls are all down here. So the upper region is where we load them and also change their state. They can just be visible or we can be editing them, that is changing some attribute of them uh, with these controls down here. Let's go ahead and add our first one. So under this pull down menu, we can find, and I've got two to show you, but I'm gonna work with the Helix data first. And I'm gonna click the uh, Helix HA and then in the preview, it shows up, which is cool. And it's already being colorized because there is just by default a zero here for the hue is, uh, is the color that shows up first. So we can put in whatever we'd like for our hue and our saturation over here. Now it's gonna look pretty ugly only because we haven't made any adjustments to the display or anything like that, but that's okay. We just wanna associate, and this is the cool thing, just pick a color that we want to colorize these images. So I'm going to pick uh, 353. It's a nice hue. Uh, and I'll explain why I'm picking that hue in a moment. And then I'm going to go crazy with the saturation, but you'll notice it's slightly magenta. It's not quite red. That's because I'm honoring the fact that whenever we do HA, there is a slightly bluish component that comes from the hydrogen beta emission. And so I am including that in my color uh, for the HA layer, if I want to, and I am. Now, it still looks terrible up here. That's fine, we we're, we're, haven't adjusted it yet. Let's add more layers and go from there. But because I have now edited this layer, and you can see the layer, it's in the mode of you know changing something, we now need to commit to these changes by updating, pressing this button. And what you'll see now is that the one that we loaded, it comes in the, uh, the image ID, and the image ID is actually the same color as whatever we picked. That little color there is the same as that swatch. So we can now load another one. We would add and come down here and we're gonna do the S2. And then we're gonna pick some hues. Now I'm gonna pick something that, you know, is a hue of 20. It's kind of a yellow orange here, something like that. Now, by the way, I can click up here. I'm just, I'm typing these numbers because I did a video in which I demonstrate the whole thing, the processing of everything here of the Helix Nebula. So I just happen to remember the numbers, but you can click in the circle and uh, also click here in the saturation bar to get whatever you want. Now I'm gonna do full saturation. To update here, I can either, you know, uh, press the enter button or I can just click in another field and then the preview over here will update. And what we're looking at here is actually the blending of these two layers together with these hues 
and saturation. Now again, it looks crazy, but that's okay. Um, we're going to fix that. But recognize we can do two or three or as many as we basically would like to assign images. So we're not limited to only three here. We could do more layers and more colors if we wanted to. But in general, we're working with three uh, filter bands at a time. So in this particular case, we're just going to be doing three. Let's go ahead and commit to that and add another. You can now see why the naming is so nice here. Uh, because when we look in our pull down list, it's easy to figure out, you know, what's what. Also notice how our list is shrinking because um, you know, Mike was very smart here and he coded if it's already a layer or if it's already even a color, as you'll see in a moment, a swatch, uh, it recognizes that it's already there, so it's not going to list it. So here is the last one we want, the Helix Oxygen 3. And we need to specify its hue. And I came up with a color, um, I don't know, what is it? It's like 190, 191. And again, I'm just going to go for full saturation here, lots and lots of color. This is supposed to be that kind of blue-green color. And now we're getting kind of a blended result over here in the preview. So we'll go ahead and update. Now let's concern ourselves with the preview. Right now, there are a couple of things that I think are making it difficult to kind of see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and go right to the background neutralization, and let's just get rid of the, the bias in color so that we can really see what colors result from the image, and then we'll deal also with the fact that this looks very, very bright, and we can't really see the color of what's going on here in the center. So there is another panel here for uh, background neutralization, so I'm going to open up this panel, and I can just you know, fundamentally, I can just click background neutralization, and that is going to calculate the neutralization of the background based on the entire image. Now, in general, though, we want to make a, a, re, uh, a region of interest here. We want to select a small region and calculate from that. But I suspect that in this particular case, even with the big helix nebula middle, uh, it's very likely the answer is probably okay. This particular method of determining the background, it can even have stars in it. That's no problem at all. It is better to perhaps select a region rather than, uh, you know, a big nebula in the field. Uh, but even with this, the whole field looked fine. If we wanted to do a region, what you can do is you can click and drag. It all, you know, it selects a region and it also zooms. So we're going to get basically a small piece of the image here. And then I can say, well, let's set this as my region of interest. And you'll see the coordinates show up. That represents what part of the image this little area is that I've defined. Now I can double click again to zoom back out. So if you want to see the entire image, we can do that. But at this point, the background neutralization is being calculated from that region of interest. And you can see the result is very similar. It didn't matter that I had this big bright star in there. That's perfectly fine. In fact, I have an entire video on my website about how this method works. This method is the same method that's employed in SPCC, for example. Now I can already see some wonderful things about the this particular color palette that I've chosen. Um, I can start to see, you know, colors of the outer parts of the nebula, but the inside we might want to look at with a little more care. So we need to change the STF here, the screen stretch, so that we can see what's going on. Remember, these are linear images. We're looking at a linear image here being displayed with this particular STF. So um, in this implementation, this particular script, we're going to adjust this by just adjusting the target background. So if you want to see the very brightest bits, you want a very, very dark background, basically. Make this a smaller number. So for example, if I do 0.25, it might allow us to see a little bit more. Yeah, now we can see this a little bit better, which is nice. But uh, the helix pretty bright. So let's go ahead and make this something like 0.05. And we'll very likely be able to see more of what's going on in the center, like that. So if you want to zoom in, I can zoom in like this. And if we didn't like the colors, we can change them. That's kind of the fun thing here. So if I didn't like, you know, the color here that I chose for S2 and I wanted to make it something more yellow or something along those lines, I could. So 
uh, what you would do is just go to edit. I have the, the triangle here, so it means I'm obviously selecting this particular uh, layer. And then I just change my hue. I can click, change it, something like that if I wanted. This is making it more of a yellow orange. I doubt we'll see a very big effect here. If we, uh, maybe if we continue to go to straight up yellow, we're gonna start to see more a different hue here. It's hard to tell. Oh yeah, you can definitely see in the outer part here. <laughs> uh, I'm basically changing the the S2 and the HA kind of coincide with one another. So all I'm really doing is changing uh, where those two overlap. I kind of like where it was. But you can change any of these particular layers to whatever your heart's content is. I'll go ahead and update. Commit to that. By the way, if you wanted to see uh, something more of, you know, how these layers are interacting with one another, let me, uh, let me just zoom out again. You can turn the, off the visibility of the layer if you want. So if I deselect the S2, then I'm just going to be looking at the blending of the, um, the other two colors. So why don't I turn off the, the O3, for example. All I need to do is press the shift button and click and you'll make a little X there. And now I'm just looking at the blending of those two things. You can see that there is a slight difference uh, between how much HA there is and where the S2 kind of overlaps, which is in the, the outer stuff, I guess. This object is, uh, because it's an emission nebula, it's a little bit different. In the second example, I think I can show this a little bit better. I'll just shift click again, turn them back on. Two more things that I'd like to point out. First is that we have associated with each of these is a color swatch that is defined by a hue and a saturation. So one of the cool things that we can do is we can define a palette. We can actually save these so that if we ever want to use them again in exactly the same way, we can. Uh, so what we can do is add a palette, and I'm going to give it a name like uh, Adam's palette. You know what this is, though? This is my uh, natural NB palette. That's what this actually is. You'll see, well, I think you can kind of see by the image, it has kind of a, a natural appearance. It doesn't look so much like a narrow band image. So I'll call this a natural NB. And then we can add swatches. So I'm going to add this color because I'm selected um, on this particular layer. So I'll, I'll add that in here. And then I can select the other one and add that in here and then select this one and add it in. And now this is the palette, the natural indie palette. If I make another palette, it could be something completely different. This could be for, I'm gonna call this dusty stuff. And you'll see why that's important in a moment. I'll be able to switch back and forth between the palettes once I've defined the other one anyway. So it'll remember these things and you can even share um, them with you know, potentially other people so that uh, you can be using the same palettes, I guess, if you'd like. The last thing I want to point out is one more panel here, which is the histogram adjustment controls. This becomes useful if we want to change the relative um, significance, importance, brightness of any of the particular layers. In fact, you can even make them equally. So if you have like a weaker um, channel or a weaker uh, layer, say you're looking at, uh, you know, O3 and it's not very bright in an object, the next actual example I'll show you is a perfect example of this. What you can do is you can change the um, strength of it by just manipulating. So we put this in the edit mode here, and then you can change it by changing the midtones. How this works is that you're going to compare whatever one that you're looking at with the reference, um, uh, the, the one that's the reference layer. So the reference layer here is zero. So currently we can see two histograms, but they're all squished over here. You can't actually see them because the range right now, you'll see the graphic, uh, the graph maximum over here, it goes all the way to 0.01. So we basically need to zoom in. If I add a zero here, we should be able to zoom into this graph, and now we can see the two histograms. Let's say that the O3 was overwhelming here, and you wanted less O3. You wanted to see more red and stuff in the middle of the helix. What we could do, we're, remember, we're on the O3 layer right now, is we could raise this up 
like this, just change that mid-tones, and you can see that we have now changed this, and then, boy, look how red this becomes, because we have decreased the brightness, if you will, the importance of the O3 contribution. Now, I don't, I don't actually want to do that. I'm going to put that back. The next example I'll show you, I think, is a far more instructive example. So I'm going to leave it in this form, but I just wanted to show you. You can zoom into a little graph region so you can see what's going on, and then you can adjust the midtones and shadows to get whatever it is that you'd like to, uh, wherever it is you'd like to be. This is actually a way to do something like, uh, something akin to a linear fit, if you wanted all of your, your channels to have that kind of equal signal strength. So once we're happy, we can actually output the colorized layers themselves if we want. But in this particular case, I'm just going to, you know, just output the, the color image, not the individual frames. Oh, oh, I need it. Sorry. Let me update. It was still in update mode. Right. There it goes. Now what will happen is it'll say, we'll still be in the script, and you can see what it's doing here, background neutralization, in case you can't see your control. Now it says the NB color mapper is done, so we'll exit out of here, and everything we have here will be saved, so you don't have to worry about losing your palette or something like that. And then we have the image. Now remember, this is a linear image, which is great, so if I hit the auto STF, it's going to be just like we were seeing, but it'll be overly bright. This is where, of course, like anything in PixInsight, you're going to need to stretch the image eventually. You might need to do some more things like uh, Blur Exterminator and other things before you go and stretch the image. But, uh, but sure, you can adjust this here so we can see what's going on on the inside. We can go what's going on on the outside. We can make this a starless image. We can do DBE. We can do everything we need to do from this point. And it was fun, in my mind, to be able to colorize the image because you just pick the colors that you want, neutralize the background, and there it is. You can see it in real time, what you're going to get, and then just work from there. Now, just go ahead and show you that the final version of what I demonstrated, you know, from the color mapper script through all of the processing, ended up with an image that looks something like this. So based on actually that palette that I was showing you, I was able to get an image that looks like this. One more example, we have the Dragons of Aura here. Let me show you how we can put together this image, which is just a little bit different than the Helix Nebula. I'm going to go once again back to the NB Color Mapper, and I will, I've already cleared this, so let's go ahead and add the HA. Now, this time around, we're going to use a different method, I think, for colorizing the image, because... This is a dusty region, and it's a region that if we looked at the grayscale images, we can see that there's a fairly weak signal of uh, the O3. So in this particular example, I think I'm looking more for a coloration that's that orange kind of color with the blue or blue-green of the O3. That means, because again, still the HA dominates, I'm going to make the color of HA this particular color. Now, this happens to be what I had uh, manipulated earlier, but I think this is fine. We'll try this particular color for uh, that yellow kind of orange color for HA. We will go ahead and update here. Now, let's load. Let's go ahead and get the O3 going on here. So, for the O3, I think what we should do is... You know, I think this blue, but uh, probably a slightly different blue. See, this is the blue that I had, but again, I think I'm going to lean more towards a, a more heavy blue here. So how about we go somewhere? Maybe somewhere over here. Uh, let's split the difference here. There we go. But I, can, I really can't see very much blue here just because it's a weaker channel. So what we could also do is go ahead and just bring it up to approximately the same strength as the, the uh, hydrogen alpha layer. You can see here the difference between the two. So why don't we go ahead and modify this? I'm just going to guess here. Yeah, that seems good. 
And that will bring up blues, and look at that. Now we can see some blues here going on in the background. And because this is a different blue than what we had before, I'm going to go ahead and add it over here, and I will subtract this one from the set, like that, because now we're going to basically have a new um, palette that we can create here. Maybe it'll be our dusty region palette or something along those lines. We'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and do an update here. I think I, by doing that, when I clicked on that palette, I uh, accidentally switched it from the, it's a different, it looks too green now. Oh my goodness. Let's put that back to this swatch here. And then finally, let's add the S2 layer, which is not terribly strong, but it's really the the other two colors that are going to be the, the dominant ones here. So this one I'll go ahead and associate with that red. Something that you should recognize, you can actually change the names of the swatches. So this is like blue for dust. I don't know, I'm just giving it a, a strange name or something like that. And if I wanted to save this as my dust palette, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm going to call this the dusty palette. I can do that. And then I will, uh, well, I can actually, I guess I should just put these in here. So I'll just add them and then they'll be part of the dusty palette. So I will add that swatch there. I will, sorry, I will add the this color here. And now we can distinguish between our natural palette. And now we can distinguish between our dusty palette and our natural palette here with a slightly different coloration. So that works out. And uh, since we've already done the histogram adjustment, kind of equalizing the signal strengths here, the neutralization of the background, I mean, this whole field is filled with nebulosity. So it's a choice whether you should do this or, you know, even at all. I'm going to go ahead and make a, I'm going to come over here. Maybe over there looks like a reasonable area. I'll make that my region of interest like this. I will go ahead and apply the background neutralization. This might help give us more blues, maybe. I don't know. I double click. And there we go. So, uh, a completely, not completely different palette, but a slightly adjusted palette for this particular dusty region, which kind of gives us more of that gold and orange glow, plus maybe some blue in the background. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, output this image. Exit out of here. And there we go, the beginnings of an image. What I might do is uh, remove these stars and then just make some adjustments to the nebula. Okay, so the stars have been removed. What we can do is uh, increase the color saturation, and in doing so, we can put a notch in the saturation. Let's see, color, saturation, uh, so that we're really not increasing much in the way of uh, anything that's green. Uh, but this way we can keep all the, you know, the yellows and reds pretty strong. And then, of course, all the other colors, the blue especially, we want to be pretty strong. So let's go ahead and apply that. You can see we're getting some wonderful colors here. Um, for some increased contrast, we could continue and perhaps do uh, curves. Transformation here. With curves transformation, probably one of the interesting or most interesting adjustments here is with the, uh, the C here, the C channel. That does, that really makes it more of a, kind of puts it more of a gold color, I guess, with the blue showing up. And then uh, I just barely touch the red channel just to make sure that the, it's not yellowish, but it still has some of uh, an orange red going on there. So we'll go ahead and apply this. Then maybe we do something like a, uh, uh, and this is just for simplicity. We do some kind of large-scale unsharp mask. Just to put a little more 
contrast into it. So this probably needs a bit more in the way of uh, color saturation. And, you know, I didn't even apply a blur exterminator or anything like that. So this is the beginning, but let me show you what Russ created. Russ ended up with something that looks like this, extremely high contrast with very saturated colors. But I think that you can appreciate that you can get from here to something like that by continuing to process this image. So I hope that you've enjoyed looking at the new script, and I'm just going to bring it up again so you can stare at it. It's really what I think of as a lot of fun. You can now colorize your narrow band images in any number of ways that you want just by simply clicking on the color and looking you know, in real time at the preview. These images remain in their linear form, though there are other uses of the tool where you can even uh, utilize this to help you create stretched versions of images, which again, you would put together. All of this information you can see in much greater detail on my site at adamblockstudios.com. As I mentioned, I process these examples fully so that you can see how it all comes together and uh, see all of the tricks and techniques uh, without uh, losing any of that valuable information. Thanks a lot for joining me. Comment down below about what you thought of this new script and uh, also your experience with using it. Um, I look forward to uh, hearing from you. Thanks. Thank you.